Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Q at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor QLogic with support from HGST, Violin Memory, and Mark Logic. Now, here is your host, Dave Vellante. We're back at Moscone South. We're here in the QLogic booth. In the back, over by the Oracle demo area, and uh, so stop by and see us. Uh, again, Moscone South. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's live mobile studio. We drop into the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Year five for us inside the QLogic booth at, uh, at Oracle Open World. It's my pleasure to have Mike Gustafson here. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Flash Platform Group at HTST. Gus, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, David, great to be here. So I was watching your event you know, remotely. I didn't yeah. get a chance to, to attend, but it looked like a, a really a great coming out party for you guys. You've done a bunch of software acquisitions, obviously the Viridin acquisition that, that you helped engineer. Really, as we were talking about off camera, quite a number of moves on the chessboard that have really changed the game. Talk about that a little bit. Oh, it's been outstanding. I mean, so from the standpoint of HGST, looking at playing a, a more aggressive and a, a, a more of a shaping the industry role, the acquisitions that we made about a year ago, this was a big event for us a couple weeks ago, actually announcing many of the products and solutions that have come from those acquisitions. So, combination of things we announced included some specifics around the Flash platform group with uh, more accelerated Flash uh, solutions on the product side. And then up the stack, uh, a combination of hardware and software aspects where we actually announced things like a, a purpose-built kind of Oracle rack solution, which was, which was outstanding. And then more traditional for our company around the HDD world, some of the, the work that we're doing on Helium and driving capacity leadership there with uh, an eight and 10 terabyte offering of products and a vision around an active archive platform were all kind of the, the sweet spot of the announcements that we made a couple weeks ago. Yes, yeah, so I see that. You mentioned you know, the, the high capacity stuff, sort of extending the, the base uh, indefinitely, really, but then trying to capitalize on some of the new trends that we've certainly written about at Wikibon, you know, we talk about server sand, but you've seen function for the last you know, couple of decades move out of the host onto the sand, you know, for good reason, but now they're moving back. You got in-memory, you got prices coming down, capacity's going through the roof, and then flash really yeah. is that big disruption. I wonder if you could comment on that shift and how you guys want to take advantage of that. Yeah, I think, you know, just to kind of add around the comments you made, I think there's that combination of the flash, there's the convergence aspect, and then there's this intelligence needed around the flash and the media to actually get it to the point where we can start to deliver to, to the enterprise, both traditional and cloud enterprises, what the SAN did a decade or so ago, and that's the more efficient, shared storage with the attributes of protection and management and scale, but in a, in a medium which is flash oriented. And that's what's completely different, is how do you actually drive those capabilities up the stack and do so, so that you're not compromising around the performance that you're paying for, but still get all the protection and the management and the scale capabilities that the SAN brought us. And the way we look at that, we're actually uh, you know, trying to package that up as a concept around fabric flash, or a flash fabric. Fabric flash with a lot of software. I mean, if you go back to the 80s, I mean, network appliance yep. sort of created the appliance model. And then despite a lot of friction, you know, it's another point of management. Some people don't like you know, the concept of appliances, but it's, it's worked. You look all over the or yeah. Oracle floor, it's all appliances. Yeah. Larry talked last night about appliances. The model you're putting forth is different. I, I see it as, I, I see it as the, the next generation of, you called it fabric, but I wonder if you could talk about that vision a bit. Yeah, and I think it's important, as you say, there's a, we participate today in the world of the appliances or in the flash array, whether it's hybrid or all flash array. We do that with our component business or our devices where we'll, we'll, we'll make those available to our partners and they package those in, whether it's a purpose-built appliance mm -hmm. or a SAN extension. But, but to your point on what's that next turn of the crank, we actually see for performance applications where you want to be closest to the CPU as possible, you're going to be inside the server. And so, you know, we, we see that as an opportunity not just with the flash again, but as you mentioned, the intelligent devices around that. So we have a concept around device affinity where we actually, you know, whether it's endurance or performance benefits, this device affinity allows us to extend the life of the flash. It allows us to be more intelligent about the firmware that's wrapped around that controller. And then ultimately, and this is the big step I think for us, is we want to get up into that application. We want to be application down versus just the storage up. And by doing so, we get greater insights on its performance, um, how to actually tune and optimize, uh, again, up at that server layer without compromise on performance. And you look what's happening with mobile. You talk about device uh, affinity, and you talk about applications. Everything's going mobile. Talk about how mobile 
is changing the business in general and specifically how HGST wants to capitalize on it. Well, it's funny, I mean, just from a flash perspective, it got its start in the mobile world and the consumer side. So, um, you know, beyond that though, I think the interesting parts are consumers today are creating more data than frankly the, the, the traditional enterprise had ever before. And we have a concept we talk about where the world was accelerated by IT. Um, I'm, I'm, and, and now really the, sorry, IT accelerated the world and now really the world or the consumer data being created is actually accelerating IT. So we have no choice but to deal with this. And so one of the interesting things that we're seeing right now is this, this raw data creation, and then how do we actually take advantage of that? <clears throat> and the promise of being able to capture it in an active archive platform is one example, but then ultimately how do I put that into real-time decision making and analytics? So that's another area that's a, a huge driver of uh, flash adoption and the analytics to, uh, to actually drive the correlations across that data. That's yeah, interesting, you're talking about you know, the world accelerating, you know, the IT, the IT department, always viewed as so slow. I saw Kim Stevenson on the show floor yeah. earlier, and she was up at the keynote this morning with Mark Hurd, and she was saying, you know, we're kind of slow in IT, and we need to keep moving. And, and so, there's a tension there. Yeah. You know, you're seeing you know, cloud, people swiping credit card, you're seeing big data, and the marketing guys are uh, hiring all these analytics folks. And the pendulum has always swung, is this a permanent swing, do you think, in just in terms of the dynamic of the, the IT group really getting pushed? Are they remaking themselves? What are you seeing in the customer base? You know, I, I thought this morning was really you know, spot on in terms of the, the, not only the, the messaging around partnering with the business, um, you know, that, that theme is throughout everybody that presented this morning, including Kim. Also, I think this, uh, the pace of change is one where I don't know if it's a pendulum swinging just in a binary A or B. Yeah, I right. think we have a third dimension here. And, and I think it's going to take a new shape. I think that dimension is going to be one that's, that's more market driven, more business driven, and trying to really understand what is the question that we're trying to solve for, and then how do we look back at IT and infrastructure to help us solve that. And you know, those that spoke this morning talked a lot about not just the desire, but the clear priority that we must do this. And I think the, uh, the request from the industry to make sure that we come at them with more simplified solutions, and everybody, I think, to a person mentioned this word solution. How do we package this up, not just so it's simple on deployment, but flexibility around whether on-prem or off-prem. So all these things are causing the, uh, you know, the, the IT industry and the infrastructure providers to really put themselves in the chair of the customer. I like the way you phrase that, because a lot of people do think it's, oh, it's, it's just cyclical, oh, cloud is just IT. Yeah. I agree with you, it's different. This is a, a new dimension, and you know, I always say if you're a, a, an IT practitioner, yeah. you got to think about reskilling it. It's not just sit back and wait for the, yeah. the world to blow up and then come back to you, because yeah. it may not blow up this time. I, I, I think this is where you get the real innovators. I, I think this is the most exciting time we've had in IT, because you've got now the, it's, it's not just viewed as a cost center. It is without question an area where you can drive differentiation in the business, where if you understand what the consumers are doing and how to drive your product or solution strategies, you can be a major, not only business partner, but a, an innovator and a value creator to your business. That's something that frankly, the IT industry, we've been, we've been you know, wanting to get to this point for a long time, so very exciting opportunities. Yeah, I think it was, it was over a decade ago that Nick Carr wrote that book, Does IT Matter? And all the, yeah. everybody in the CIO world, got, yeah. you know, they got angry, you know, yeah. there was a backlash. Um, in retrospect, he was wrong, but he was right in that the traditional IT world has changed, and I, it's, I don't think it's ever going to come back to you, right? I mean, it's, it's permanently changed to one where technology is going to lead these transitions, and if you're not part of that leadership, you're going to you know, be gone. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you, and I think you, know, you can see that, uh, I think the words were, I'm trying to remember exactly how Mark structured it this morning, but we're in a deconstruction. And I, and I thought that was about as pure as I've heard it. We're all being deconstructed in terms of our businesses and business models, and those that can actually reorient and come out of that with trying to take advantage of this new, you know, this new dimension you talked about, I think are going to be the winners going forward. So what about cloud? Um, uh, it was interesting to hear Larry yesterday say, we had a commitment to our customers 30 years ago, we had to do infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, but the infrastructure as a service is obviously highly relevant to you, it's all relevant to yeah. you, these applications drive everything, but in terms of the distribution channel, how is cloud affecting your business? I mean, obviously, you can't name names, but I would presume the big cloud service providers are all calling you saying, hey, we need help with this, we're trying to yeah. custom things and sign the NDA, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I won't, I won't name Death all this. Death speak and you know, all that <laughs> stuff. But yeah. 
But you're at the heart of all that, so what, do you, what can you share with us in terms of the trends there? Yeah, it's outstanding. From our perspective, I won't name specific names, a lot of them, but I'll name a few. And I think, you know, when you look at, a great example, this is with Netflix. The business models that are becoming more pervasive in the marketplace today, in terms of not only acquiring and, and, and managing that data, but distributing that with a business advantage of their own content. Uh, Netflix is a big customer, and, and one of the things they're always going to have pressure on is driving costs down. So we're a major partner to many of those cloud providers today in terms of our device business, uh, whether that's on the HDD or the solid state storage uh, space with driving better and better capacity and higher utilizations with different packaging solutions. And people like Netflix actually just launched in Europe. I was just there last week and it was amazing at uh, the impact that they're having in Europe in terms of bringing that service to the consumer. So the other part of that, I think there's two other key areas. One is an at scale challenge for us. And so when you think about how that drives our product development and choices that we make. It's driving the Helium strategy for us. It's driving that very, very large capacity and low cost uh, solution for us. And then the second one is you still have to be very, very intelligent about what you bring them because it's not just enough to drive cost down on the device. We've got to actually look at that entire stack. So again, the combination of hardware, device affinity, and unique and differentiated software on top of that so that we bring more to the party as a building block than we had before. And now let's talk about the software a little bit. That's yeah. really where the differentiation is. I mean, when, I remember we were talking about service and off camera. Yeah. We weren't calling it service and then, but I was asked to go speak to a strategic planning meeting. You know, these woods meetings, you go off and think, right? And it was, I won't name the company, but it was a large, established whale, and, and it had a big you know, install base of product. And I came in, I put forth this notion of, you know, this distributed resource that's tied together with, so how are you going to protect it? You know, how are you going to manage it? How yeah. are you going to connect it? All these things that I didn't have the answer to. I said, well, I don't know, but the industry has to figure that out. You have to figure that out. It was, it was a lot of tension, it was very negative. Um, and now you're seeing, maybe it's not having a meaningful impact on revenues, but you can see the architecture start to come forward in it. Underlying that is software. You guys have made some software acquisitions there, so I wonder if you could talk about the role of software to HDST specifically and generally you're part of the industry going forward. Yeah, and I, I mean, it, the questions that you're hearing there, and in, in as opposed to reacting with a negative way, we love this. Because it really allows us to think about what we can bring to the party, more value, more, more, more differentiation from HGST than we've ever had before. And so it's a combination of complementing our core device business, but on top of that, we're really driving to, I'd say our strategy is this. Continue to lead with the best in class devices and the, the most broad portfolio of, of devices in the marketplace, whether that's HDD or solid state storage and do that end to end, including the opportunity to actually start to package that in more of a, a subsystem approach. That's what we announced a couple of weeks ago. Secondly, we've got to drive this device affinity, and that's all software. How do we drive more intelligence around that device to make it uh, you know, more effective, uh, drive better utilization, et cetera, and that can be done in performance, that can be done in capacity, it can be done in endurance. And then this next major step is kind of more to your point here, Dave, which is you know, how do I actually think about an infrastructure of shared and mixed workloads? not just in the highest levels of performance, but also across tiering and data movement and such. All the things that we optimized and built in the storage area networking world a, a decade or so ago, those need to be rebuilt. They need to be built in the model of today's flash. They need to be done at the absolute highest performance with the lowest latency, and they need to be done across the tiers of storage too. So these are areas where we're investing aggressively. The acquisitions we made a year ago have now been completely integrated. And we've got, as uh, just one example, a, a major announcement uh, a couple of weeks ago on a combination of an Oracle Rack initiative where we can actually take that device leadership, package that with Affinity, and with some specific uh, HGST variant share where we can scale that out and provide a all flash environment for Oracle Rack. Perfect example of bringing all those pieces together. We live in kind of a crazy world these days. We had VMworld a few weeks ago, and you have you know, Pat Gelsinger up there who's got partnerships with Cisco, and then of course he's depositioning Cisco in the next statement saying, we love their gear. So the positioning was a gear company, and of course Cisco's saying, bring it on. And you know, So we have this world of, of co-opetition. What is the conversation like with your customers yeah. when you talk about these visions, these changes? The white space is shifting. Um, you guys can't sit still. They can't sit still. You, you, you know, you, terms like subsystem, oh, that's my domain, but yeah. it's, it's the, the, the dividing lines are shifting and changing. What are those conversations like? 
Well, they, they start with a very, a core competency of our company has always been partnering. So it starts with a very transparent, open discussion with those partners. And what's unique, and I frankly, I was a little more nervous when I joined the company a year ago about this, it's very natural. And the reason is, the marketplace is driving this change. So you don't need to look beyond any of these large uh, system companies, whether storage or server or network, and ask them, are you fundamentally changing your business and your business model? The answer is yes. <laughs> so for us, when we say we're doing the same, how can we do that together? So our, our vision's pretty simple. You can, you, know, you can call us a gear company, call us what you like, but we're, a, we're device leading, device affinity and software and solution centric business as we grow with a pretty simple message and that's that we want to bring more value to the party. We want to tr uh, create larger and more valuable building blocks. And in some cases we will sell those on a direct basis, but in most cases we're taking all that back to our strength through the channels and the partners of choice to bring those to market. But it would be easy for a lot of your customers, easy and, and, and deathly, for a lot of your customers just to milk the base. Um, and, and there's a, a desire, I'm sure, an intrinsic desire to, to, to do that. So, but yet you're going to simplify a lot of what, you know, today or last decades, they've charged many you know, dollars and got huge margin for. What should they be doing to move their business models forward? What are you so, seeing in your customer base? Yeah, well, I think first and foremost, you have to, I mean, I, again, I'll go back to this morning. I thought they did a great job of asking the questions. Right. You know, what is really driving my business and my business model? What are the economic engines of my company? What are my consumers, both current and future, want? How is the, uh, you know, how are those consumers and or business to business uh, folks creating data that can become an advantage for me? And I, I think what's there today that wasn't before is, you know, we always used to talk about marketing and segmentation around this broad base, whether it was Budweiser, Bud Light, Michelob. Yeah, 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 Don't right. know why that's on my mind, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then the ultra it's dry. Right that, so, yeah, I know, <laughs> sub segments and such. But now you really do have the opportunity to start to understand what's going on with the individual. And, or smaller groups, whether that's in personalized medicine or in segmentation of, of customers. And, and this is where I think the magic's going to happen. How do you actually uh, start to adjust and drive your business models? Either one, with that information in mind to drive your product and solutions. And then secondly, how do you reach those folks in a new and unique way? The walls have come down in terms of uh, what was there before. And so I think that's why we're seeing such innovation. So that's interesting. Uh, so now you're touching on some of the, we, we talk, talk about big data, mm. but bringing that into some of the traditional storage world even. Yeah. And you're seeing some of that. I mean, you know, you saw that with, uh, with well, you're seeing that with Data Gravity, Paul Long's company, bringing metadata and analytics. Yeah. That's a huge opportunity, you know, presumably. I mean, you, I'm impressed with you. You've, you know, you, you, you nailed the scale out NAS, you know, business. You, you, you nailed Flash and have had, you know, two really successful examples there. Do you see that big data analytics as an opportunity for your customers, you know, uh, uh, generally? Yeah, without question. And I always was smart enough to be around smart people and have some passion around what I'm doing. So it's not, I've been lucky in that regard, but I think that... The that little luck helps, but you yeah, know, it does. you, got, you <laughs> got to have some chops too. Yeah, like. the, uh, I think the big data and analytics world is one that we're really just beginning to scratch the surface mm -hmm. around. There's no question uh, there's going to be people continuing to innovate like the ones you mentioned. And, and what's unique, I think, for us is people are starting to think about um, whether it's data that's created in a structured way or in an unstructured way, um, whether it's older data or newer data, people are really starting to figure out that I really want all of that, if I can, and, and, it's, and it makes sense, can I get all of that in a centralized place where I can start to do the magic around it? And again, kind of going back to the whole point of IT, if we take IT with the business people and we start to ask those smart questions, whether it's business driven at a function level or data scientists, we're going to find some incredible opportunities. And we're seeing those today with, uh, you know, I, again, I just, you know, business models that are emerging around this, and I'll go back to Netflix as an example. Uh, LinkedIn's another one where, you know, just some of the things that they do, they're a great customer of ours today around analyzing and correlating, and then if you use it, you sign on, and say you might be interested in. All that correlation and the what-if analysis comes from basically that big data and pulling all that stuff together, and it's real time. And that's, that's a lot of fun. Well, I, see, again, you're in an interesting spot because you, you mentioned LinkedIn, you, can, you mentioned Netflix, there's a number of companies you can't mention that go right to you and say, hey, we're trying to solve this problem. Um, and then, as well, you're selling to a big base of, of, of traditional customers, but to me, you, you get a little visibility, a lot of visibility on what's coming. I've always said, you want to know what's happening in the enterprise? Go look at what Amazon and Google are doing you know, five years ago, six years ago. It's coming, it's coming to the enterprise. So my question is, what happens to that stack that we, we know, some people love it, some people hate it, you know, where you've got 
your devices, you got storage protocols, which are pretty chatty, you got a lot of, you know, got a controller, you got software built up around that controller, you're getting hooks into applications. It's a pretty robust stack that's been built up over a you know, decade plus, two yeah. decades really. What happens to that stack? Does it get flattened like a pancake? Do parts of it exist for you know, special purposes? Does it all get disrupted? What do you think? Well, I mean, you hit a good point I want to reiterate there. We have a, it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to talk to and listen to those largest customers in the world, whether they're a traditional enterprise or whether they're cloud. And I think the answers vary a little bit depending upon where you are. If you've got an existing business and you need to continue to run that business without disruption, your, uh, your level of creativity, flexibility, and the constraints are a little tighter than if you're a new business in a greenfield world with the opportunity to build a brand new application. But in both cases, we've got to simplify that stack. We have to look at it in all of its layers and ask ourselves, is there value there or not? And is that value worth the, the complexity? And if not, get rid of it. And you know, on a very small level in the flash world, uh, what we're doing in terms of NVMe as a protocol and a standard is, is one way to help in that regard and continue to look at on the open source and open stack world, you know, where can we actually contribute, how do we actually simplify, because the change that's happening at the end user level needs to have the, the same pace and openness and flexibility inside the, uh, you know, the infrastructure providers. And so, I, I think that's one thing. I, would, I think it's going to change dramatically. Well, NVMe is interesting, and, and you, you, talked, you alluded to the application mm -hmm. before, and you think about the potential to totally transform applications, application performance, we talked about mobile a little bit, that's really where the dramatic value is going to, and uh, Kim Stevenson talked about business productivity as opposed to cutting costs. Yeah. I, I see Flash as playing a fundamental component of that because it's the last mechanical movement now disappears, you know, that, I say disappears, it, it changes roles. Yeah. Just like tape changed role, but in a right. way bigger manner. Yeah. Um, and, and it's going to have a bigger impact on application performance. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and you know, we see a kind of a one-two punch here. We see the continuing business around rotating media and, and hard disk drives that are going to be there. They're going to be probably more capacity oriented over time. And we see this flash world where you've got the highest possible performance and lowest latency, you know, which is really around the application. So you know, what, what we see happening there is, is as number one, the performance benefit that we won't even talk about on the application is obvious. But the other one is we're reducing the amount of rotating media there, we're driving a better TCO. Um, in a lot of ways, uh, a flash solution can help reduce the amount of space that's required for those performance applications. You can really consolidate to a much smaller environment, you can drive better uh, TCO through power and cooling capabilities, and then ultimately, if you can truly do more with less, and it's an application that's uh, screaming for I.O. Or, or that throughput capability, you're going to reduce the amount of, uh, you know, capacity that you might need on the, on the rack and be able to consolidate. And all of those things are driving uh, you know, significant benefits, including some that have actually gone to, a, I'll say, a, a pervasive flash deployment. Yeah, because companies like HDST have had to do a lot of unnatural acts and spent a lot of money on doing unnatural acts to drive system performance. We're at Oracle Open World and yeah. the consumers of you know, your products within Oracle's world, whether it's you know, short stroking, or spinning yeah. it faster, or more heads, or whatever yeah, techniques yeah. used. All, all great things to, to move the needle a little bit, but now that, that investment can go elsewhere, and, and really toward the application is, is where it's going, right? Yeah, and you know, and I don't want to be, I don't want to run past this point. I think the market still needs innovation on the capacity side. So whether that's helium yes. or, or more, more density around that, that drives cost. And so we're actually in a great position as a company because we can do both. We can drive the performance aspect of the flash world, we can drive the capacity aspect and some of the higher performing HDD world as well. In both cases, to your point, up at the application. So we really want to be you know, device leading in both of these and then understand more and more up the stack on the so application. So should we expect an innovation renaissance with that traditional business? I mean, it, it, it was clear that the, these unnatural acts making mechanics move faster and to, to try to deal with performances sort of a, a, almost a negative ROI <laughs> at some point in time. Now with Flash, you don't have to worry so much. You don't really have to worry at all about that. Now you can say, okay, this is a bit bucket technology. Let's pour investment and, and, and innovation into that. Will we see a renaissance there? I, I think if you, if you categorize it and look at just the performance side of very high end, let's say in server Flash, I think you're going to see a, a, an absolute uh, rebuilding of an architecture. And, I, and we view that as, over time, over a long period of time, we think there's going to be a, the concept of a flash fabric where you can actually share at the highest level in all flash environment with 
again, highest performance, lowest latency, and assuming that you have the software capabilities to provide high availability, the mirroring aspects, the sharing capabilities that you expect for mixed workloads. And as soon as you start to say mixed workloads or data over time, you have to, as a, as a partner in the industry, you have to bring both the performance aspect and the capacity aspect. And I think that's one of the things that makes us unique. And there's a huge metadata opportunity there. We were talking about big data analytics yeah. before. You know, someday we'll have more metadata than data. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk to the NSA, they probably <laughs> already do. All right, Gus, really great <laughs> segment. Thanks so much for coming Thanks, back Dave. on theCUBE. It was really it's a pleasure awesome seeing you again. On. Thank All you right. very much for having me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. We're live from Oracle Open World 2014. This is theCUBE, we'll right back.